Hello guys, Oscar Hotel 8, Sierra Tango, November Julian here for Off Grid Ham Radio. Look, you may or may not have known this, but I'm an absolute fanatic about solar power. Solar power for ham radios, solar power for emergency communications, solar power for camping, or just powering my ham radio station at home. Anything to do with solar power off grid is on the table. Now, for many of us, the most difficult part of getting started with solar power for portable ham radio is understanding the components and how to put them together. To be honest, though, putting things together is the easiest part of the process, so don't take any stress about that. Quite simply, that's because by the end of this video, you would have learned everything you need to know about putting a portable solar power system for your ham radio ops together all by yourself. Now, before we get too far along in this video, it's important to talk about the partners who are making this video possible. Powerfilm will be supporting this video by supplying some portable solar panels to the community, especially for those of you who are supportive of the channel. Also supporting this video are our friends from Power Queen. Power Queen is the provider of lithium iron phosphate batteries of various voltages and sizes. Just like Powerfilm, Power Queen will be giving away a few batteries for USA and the European Union in support of this video series. Our third and final partner in this series needs no introduction. It's Guinnesson, and they've been around the channel for quite a long time. Guinnesson manufactures RF Quiet MPPT charge controllers. Charge controllers which can be used in a variety of off-grid solar power scenarios. Now, just like Powerfilm Solar and Power Queen, our friends at Guinnesson will be providing four different lithium iron phosphate 4S MPBT charge controllers compatible with our Power Queen lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now, before we move on, don't forget to check the description for discount codes for Powerfilm, for Power Queen, and for Guinnesson. All right, guys, let's move on. When we're talking about portable ham radio and solar power in the field, we're talking about 12 volt systems almost exclusively. The premise here is portable ham radios run on 12 volts or actually around 13.8 volts. So why not use a 12 volt solar powered system to power our gear? Now the basic components of such a system will include a battery. That battery is going to store the power that we're going to get from the solar panel. It's also going to include a charge controller. The charge controller will negotiate between the solar panel and the battery to ensure the battery is being charged adequately and accurately. The system's also going to have a solar panel. The solar panel has two jobs. Firstly, it's going to keep the battery topped up. Now, while we're discharging the battery using our gear, the solar panel will replenish the battery simultaneously. Having the ability to replenish our battery while simultaneously discharging them with our gear is a critical aspect of off-grid solar power systems. This capability also ensures our system doesn't turn into a boat anchor if the battery happens to be dead. Finally, our system is going to have some means of distributing the power from our battery out to our radio and tablet or other equipment. For this video, we're simply using a power distribution strip with power pole connectors. There certainly are better ways to do this, but I wanted to keep it simple for this basic solar power system video. Now, I know my voice can be relaxing at times, but I need you guys to pay attention to the clip currently playing on your screen. All of the basic components to a portable power system for ham radio are here. We have the charge controller. We have the power distribution, we have the battery pack, we have the cabling, the fusing, and the solar panel. Oh, we also have Junior here waiting for me to throw the Frisbee. Now, the point I'm trying to make is many of the questions I get are, how do we put the system together? Well, it's actually incredibly simple. There's only four components, the battery, the charge controller, the power distribution, and the solar panel. Now, of course, we could integrate all of the portable power components, the battery, the power distribution, and the charge controller inside an enclosure or something like that. But we leave them outside and exposed like this so that you can see that it's actually not that complicated. Let's look at these from another perspective. 
If we think about it in the way that everything starts from the battery, the battery is connected to the charge controller. So let's say it in a different way. The plus and minus of the battery are connected to the battery input on the charge controller. The solar input on the charge controller is connected to the plus and minus on the solar panel. Additionally, the plus and minus of the battery are also connected to the plus and minus on our power distribution input. Then, one of the outputs on the power distribution board are connected to the radio and to our USB-C power delivery adapter, which connects to our tablet. Do you see how simple this is? We could further simplify the system by getting rid of the power distribution and replacing it with a custom cable harness, which only has the IOs that we need. We'll leave that for another video. And for now, let's get things wired up. Now, the first thing we're going to do is prepare the wires for the charge controller. I'm installing for rules on the end of the wires so that we won't put bare wires into the Guinness on charge controller. We're using the for rules because they provide a more robust connection in the field. The very last thing we want is some frayed cabling coming out of the charge controller while we're far away from the beaten path. Now we're going to terminate the wires on the solar input side of the charge controller with Anderson power poles. These are smaller and lighter than the MC4 connectors we generally use in household solar installations. To be fair though, if the Anderson power pole wasn't a de facto standard in amateur radio, I probably wouldn't use them. I would probably defer to XD60 or XD90 connectors, which are superior. Anyway, here's our Anderson power pole connector. So now we're going to go ahead and connect up the battery. Now what I've done is I've made a splitter cable, one end going to the battery and the other end going to the battery input on the Guinness on charge controller. As a reminder, and keeping in mind I'm no Picasso, this is how the test system for this video is set up. Now when we make the final connection to the battery, we want to check the Guinness on charge controller for a slow blinking green pulse. Any red LED is a bad thing. Now it's time to test the system out in the field. We're not really going to go out to the field now, we're going to go to the patio. The thing is, we don't want to test a freshly prepared system out in the field. We rather do a quality control check at home in a controlled environment so that we can work out all the bugs. So we're going to check all of the connections. We're going to make sure the charge controller is actually blinking once it's connected to the solar panel to ensure that there's some current and voltage coming in. We're also going to check our radio to make sure it's charging. And if you have a tablet or laptop connected to your adapter, make sure that it's charging as well and that your adapter is powered up. While you're inspecting everything, make sure to keep your radio volume high enough that you can hear if there's any hash coming in from your charge controller and solar panel. I tested on 20 meters and I tested on 40 meters and I was very happy with the results. Now all charge controllers make noise, but the Guinnessons make the least noise of any of the charge controllers I've tested. And since many of you keep asking, my charge controller recommendation is the Guinnesson GV10L for 4S lithium iron phosphate batteries. For portable lithium iron phosphate batteries, I've been testing the Power Queen batteries since August of 2023. They've been absolutely brilliant. Now for my choice of solar panels, I do understand that they're expensive, but if you're operating MAM portable, fat bike portable, bike packing, or something like that, 
These are the lightest, most effective panels on the market today. Now, I've been using the power foam panels for ham radio, but recently, about a year ago, I started using them to charge up my electric fat bike as well. And although some people are saying I take money for saying things like that, I don't. I use and recommend power foam panels because they solve a problem for me, the problem of mobility. The thing is, everything I carry out into the field, I either have to carry it on my back or I have to carry it on my bike. If a particular piece of gear is too heavy, it's going to be left behind. I'm just not going to take it out in the field. It's the same with Guinness on and it's the same with Power Queen. They solve problems, the problems of mobility, the problem of battery density, the problem of noise in our HF transceivers. All right, guys, I think that's enough rambling from me for this video. To keep this video short, I decided that if I missed something, you guys would let me know in the comments and I would update the episode notes and add the answers to those questions and comments there. If I've missed something massive, we'll go ahead and make another video, which is always a good thing. I love making portable power videos, especially now because the summer is arriving. For those of you who have been supporting the channel and waiting for that giveaway announcement, I'll post those lucky participants in an upcoming video in the coming days. And as one last reminder, remember to check the links in the description there are discount codes to links for Power Film, for Genison, and for Power Queen batteries. Even if you don't get some of the gear from the giveaway, you'll still get the discounts. All right, guys. If you like what I'm doing, if you like the content I'm creating, please let me know by leaving me a comment, a thumbs up, or a super thanks to let me know. And if it's not too much to ask, please share this video with someone or someplace where other operators might find it interesting. Rock and roll, guys. You are all absolutely awesome. Thanks for watching. Ciao.